Welcome back to Bomb Shelf. I'm Josh. I'm Keith. And I'm Eric. And now Joyce is going to tell you what we're drinking today. Today you are drinking J.P. Weiser's Triple Barrel. J.P. Weiser's Whiskey is Canada's oldest continuous producer of Canadian whiskey. They currently produce their whiskey at their distillery in Windsor, Canada. This expression of their rye whiskey combines distillates from used whiskey, first fill bourbon, and virgin oak casks. This whiskey comes in at 90 proof. We paid $15 for this bottle with it usually costing around $23. As always, your prices may vary. Enjoy! Thanks Joyce. Let's go ahead and dive in and see what they think. As always, I know what we're drinking, they don't. Pungent. Pungent comes to mind. That's. I'm getting like probably the most watermelony fruit note maybe not watermelon but melon i think melon yes i'm thinking watermelon i'm getting no. a, i'm getting a watermelon no i think it's more cantaloupe so this is like the strongest i've ever gotten melon on a whiskey like usually that's like one of the things we get down the road a little bit melon is like just jumping out to me on this one yeah i'm getting melon i don't know what type could be cantaloupe could be watermelon not honeydew. Definitely not super sweet. Sour apple. See, I'm not getting like other fruit. I'm just getting melon and I'm getting some like grainy. I'm actually not getting much like grain. Cereal. I'm not getting much grain. I'm getting more, I don't know, caramel, like something syrupy. I'm not getting any any sweetness at all out of this. Yeah, I'm, mm -hmm. I'm not even. No it, caramel. It may be no. you know what it is and you know that you're so as you smelling something sweet. Right. But I'm not picking up sweet. I'm picking up like a yeah. less sweet melon and cereal. So, and like dusty grains. It, it almost smells dusty. I'm going to go for a sip. Doesn't taste like the nose. Nope. Not at all. I'm not sure if it tastes bad per se, just not what I was expecting. That finish lingers. Yeah, it does. First of all, I didn't get much lingering. Second one, yeah. More lingering spice, like wood spice, baking spice, baking spices. A little bit of leather on the finish. I can see that, like a little bit of oak, a little bit of leather. I get the baking spices. I'm not mm -hmm. picking up the leather or like I, doing anything similar to that. But I just got it on my second, on my uh, second sip. Oh. The palate, though, I just don't know how to place the palate. Yeah. I, I think I'm getting a little bit of white pepper. I would agree with, like, a pepper, maybe even white pepper. Also, the palate's not nearly as good to me as the nose was. Oh, absolutely not, no. No. And I wish it was better. Getting a little bit of white pepper, and I think maybe a little bit of toffee. I can see the toffee. Going but back... Very light. Going back to the nose, I'm getting even more, like... For me, caramels and toffees in the nose. More syrupiness, maybe? Like, I'm going, going back to the nose after tasting, and I like the nose even better now. But Yeah, I like the nose even better. It almost feels a little sweeter. Like, there actually is some sweetness there. Yeah, still not a whole lot on the, on the palate, though. Going back for a, sec a third sip. Mostly spice. Maybe, like you are saying, like a little bit of caramel toffee or something like that. But not the biggest... It's, Honestly, I think I feel like it's not burning ethanol, but I feel like it's got like a... You can definitely taste or, or distinguish the ethanol, but it's not, not like burning you. And boy, that make my lips dry. Hmm. Like a sour pucker. You guys ready for some water? I'm, I, I think this might do I well. Water. Yeah, I yeah. think so too. Yeah, I think so. While we while let the water mingle with the whiskey, let's tell you about our homes on the internet. You can find us on Facebook and Instagram at the Bombshelf Whiskey. I think of the past few episodes, I said the Bombshelf Bombshelf Whiskey. Twitter at Shelf Whiskey, and what else? You can find us on PodHubNetwork.com with our podcast. We're a little bit behind when recording this. Hopefully, we're caught up by the time this video releases. You can also find a link to the bottle down below for Drizzly. Going through that link will give us a three percent back on whatever purchases you make in the next three months. So we'd really appreciate checking that out if you want delivery of beer, wine, and spirits. You can also support us directly by checking out our Patreon and our Buy Me A Coffee down below. Links are down there to help support the channel, uh, give us direct donations, and helps us 
by the bottles that we review. <laughs> Alright, so water's mingled. Let's go ahead and dive back in and see if this changed anything. Ooh, Ooh very sweet on the nose now. I'm getting more like woody notes on the nose now. Wood floral. Yeah, I'm, I'm getting syrup. I'm getting maple syrup. Yes. Like just like yes. um like a like a warmed maple syrup so it's a little bit runny and thinner. Yeah, I'm definitely getting that maple. Oh man. Whoa. Maybe even like butter maple syrup. Yeah. Buttered pancakes. Yeah, like the whole way through. The syrup, I'm still getting that like a good grainy pancake. So like a like a whole wheat pancake? Yeah, like a whole wheat pancake. Brought out more sweetness, but it got thinner. It did get thinner. And it still tasted kind of watery. Not as astringent on the finish. That is true. That's a, that's a confusing whiskey. Yes, yes, yes it, it is. is. I like complex. This is definitely complex. It's got a lot of burn with the water. Like a peppery burn. Oh, see, I think it took a while to burn having the water in there. Same. I'm not getting, like, any I, burn. I don't now. mean, like, an alcohol burn. I mean... Yeah, see, I'm not getting any of the cooking spices anymore. Not Like, I'm not getting that, like, spicy burn or the alcohol burn anymore. I am, like, at the roof of my mouth getting a little bit of burn. Just a little bit for me, like, mm-hmm. right on the back of the tongue. But it's not a lot compared yeah. to the first sip. Yeah. For me, for me, like, it's gone down for sure. Yeah. A significant amount. So let's dive into some ratings from us. So on the nose... I originally was going to give it a three. I liked everything I was smelling. It had enough notes. Adding the water brought it up to a 3.5 for me because I liked the notes. I was getting more, and it tells me that there's a lot more to this once the water's added, so I'm getting different notes. I agree with Eric to some extent. I'm going with a three baseline. Adding the water, I'm actually going to a four though, not a three and a half. It added so much more to the nose. It blew my mind the second time around. It's still blowing my mind. Yeah. Whew, that's so nice. Yeah, I originally was going to go to 3.5, and then I'm jumping up to a 4. Just this that maple syrup. As things start to melt down a little bit more, I'm starting to get more of that fruit notes again. But, but that maple syrup is just so much there. Ugh, it smells so good. Enticing. And it really lets me down going into the palette. So the palette was not at all what I expected. I'm actually going to give it a 1.5. Yeah. It just, it was not good to me. I was going to go 1.5 on the palette as well. Uh, with water, bumped it up to a two, just a little bit, added a little more complexity, which is something that I like, but this is still not a palette I'm looking for. I went 2.5 baseline, and then I kind of stick with it. I think it got better, but not better enough to really leave 2.5. I think 2.5 was probably a little bit generous, but it was generous on the first go. So I'm just leaving it at 2.5 for the palette. And then finish. I really like this finish without the water. I was going to give it a 3.5. Then we added water and it took away all the finish. I'm still gonna give it a three overall, but with water, I'd say this finish is a two, two and a half max. Okay. I agree with Eric uh, completely on the on the finish on this. Originally, I had it as a three. I'm taking it to a 2.5 with the water. The nose is absolutely the best point of this whiskey. For sure. Oh, um, absolutely, yeah. Unfortunately, I'm looking to drink a whiskey, not smell it. Yeah, I gave it a three um, overall. Yeah, it was fine. It was better than like an average thing. Like it's a decent finish, but it wasn't anything like impressive. All right, so that's our ratings. We'll go in for you guys to do your guesses. What kind of whiskey do you think this is? What do you think the proof is? Uh, how much do you think it costs? And then how much would you pay for it? Originally, when I first tasted this and my first gut feeling was this was high proof. I was gonna say 100 proof. There's no way that you made us drink 100 proof whiskey first. I'm going 84. Okay. Uh, I'm gonna say it's Canadian. I don't really have any good evidence of that. I'm horrible at guessing types of whiskey. Uh, I think it's probably $14. I would pay 10 to 12. I'm gonna go blended Irish on this one. 80 proof. You paid 10 to 12 and I would pay 10 to 12. All right, great. So let's dive in and see what we got here. So we're gonna start with uh, the ratings of their sites and the tasting notes from just around the web. So Distiller gave this a 90, and Whiskey Advocate also gave it a 90. This is what the most common notes were for the nose. Apple, vanilla, rye spice, 
palate, creamy, spices, caramel, then finish, lingering spices. Which I think we said most of those things. Yeah. I purposely said it was not apple-y on the nose. So what kind of whiskey this is? This is a Canadian whiskey. Yes. So one point for Eric. Proof, this is 90 proof. So another one for Eric. Uh, price. So you said, I said I thought it was 14, I would pay 10 to 12. And you said, you think it's 10 to 12, or? Yep. All right, so, so the general price for this is actually $22. <laughs> nope. That being said, I paid 15 for it. So let's talk about, let's go ahead and do the reveal. Still paid too much in my book. Yeah. Today we drank J.P. Weiser's Rye Triple Barrel Blended Irish Whiskey. You said it was you Canadian. You said it was Canadian just a minute ago. It is. This is a Canadian rye. It is a, legally is a Canadian, blended Canadian whiskey. But then I think you just said it was blended Irish. Did I say blended Irish? Yes. yes. Blended, well then ignore me, read the label, it's Canadian. Confusing us. Maybe it's Irish Canadian, no? <laughs> no, it's, it's definitely Canadian whiskey. It's a Canadian rye whiskey. So uh, this is J.P. Weiser's Triple Barrel. Those barrels are as follows. Used whiskey barrels, first fill bourbon barrels. So these be, they were, were bourbon barrels and then they got sent to Canada and they aged some whiskey in there. And then virgin oak cast, which usually means I think they don't char it. So three different barrel aged whiskeys. Three, uh, and then those three barrels get blended together to make this. Uh, I don't know the match well because usually the way that Canada does things is that they will age each grain separately. So they'll distill corn, age it, distill rye, age it, distill malted barley, age it. And then they'll blend those together after aging. It doesn't, they don't have to, there's no like legal requirement for them to do that, but it just tends to be a tradition that happens in Canada. Which is why a lot of Canadian whiskeys are called blended Canadian whiskeys, because they are blends of different spirits um, that, they've, that they've distilled and aged. That being said, we didn't give it high ratings, but I think we did give it high ratings for a Canadian. I was, I would absolutely agree with that. I think that we did give it great ratings, but I was going to say this is probably one of the better Canadians I've had. I think you're coming over to the rye side, Eric. I do like rye. Yeah. <laughs> this won Best Canadian Whiskey at the World Whiskey Awards in 2017. So it was a, a while ago. A lot of things have come out since then. It's not a bad bottle. I like that the balls, I like square bottles, I've found. I like that it's squared. People like bottles that, are, that aren't round because they don't roll. Right. Not that you should be- That might be it. That might be something. I mean, not that, yeah. Not that you should be keeping your bottles on end because it can wear away the cork if it has one. This one does not have this a cork. This one does not have a cork. So you're not super worried about that, but if you don't tighten it enough, you will leak. <laughs> okay. Unrelated, but well, sort of related. But is there something with green labels and rye? Yes, there's. there's but there's nothing legal about it. There's nothing legal about it, but there's just a tradition. There's just, so that's, yeah, an unintentional tradition. Like okay. people just tend to, for some reason, associate rye with green. I was just curious. Yeah. So if you look at a lot, not all, but a lot of rye whiskeys will have a green label. Green label, or at least green notes, because I noticed this one and then the Edger Brooks straight yeah. rye. Uh, Hunter rye, I wouldn't say, it's like almost like greenish grayscale. Like, I would uh, say it's more just grayscale. Yeah, it's mostly just grayscale. <laughs> All right, well, that's our review of JP Weiser's Triple Barrel. Till next time, may the winds of fortune sail you. May you sail a gentle sea. May it always be the other guy who says, This, this drink's on me. <laughs>